I put it? Found it. Hey everyone, it's Chris at Lime Punch Forge. Today we're gonna be working on, uh, you've seen a couple other videos before of me doing this, but this is the first time I've done kind of a, done it as part of a project. So essentially what's gonna be happening is this is part number two of Rough to Riches Washington Jade or Neverite. I have here a nice piece of Washington Jade Neferite that has been preformed to an oval and then tapered over. I don't know if you can see that. You'll see it up close. But it's been tapered so that when I'm cutting my facets, I don't have as much material to remove. So that's pretty much what I've got going on today. I'm going to be using this facet design. I'll talk a little bit more about facet designs as I go. But essentially, it's a recipe for cutting a stone like that. <coughs> I'm gonna put that right up here so I know where to go. It's basically, it's like following a roadmap. It'll tell you exactly which angle, it'll tell you exactly which index on the stone to turn it to, and it'll be a lot of fun to see this piece of jade, woo, almost dropped it, turn into a rose cut gemstone. If you haven't already, go ahead and click down below. There's a red subscribe button. If you guys are liking these kind of videos, please leave me a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. If not, go ahead and watch a little bit and uh, see if I can maybe earn your subscription. Also, if you haven't already, check out LimePunchForge.com. There's a link there for t-shirts, hats, all sorts of other fun stuff. But you guys came for the lapidary, for the fun, not for the pitching my merchandise. So, without further ado, I'm gonna strap on my GoPro here so you get a downward view of what's happening, and uh, I'll film some of what's happening here. All right, the first thing I need to do in order to get this machine up and running is take my piece of jade, and it's on a dop stick already. I'll do another video on how to add dop wax, but this is stuck on there. It's not going anywhere. Now I need to insert it into my machine. So I'm going to insert it in and then I'm going to move my index to a like a zero point. In this case it's 96. So what I'm going to do is see if my mass is unlocked. It is not. I need to grab an Allen wrench. Alright, so what I have here, let me tip you guys down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and lay my stone flat on the lap on one of the edges or the girdle. I've got my index on my machine set to where I want zero to be which is at 96 because it's a 96 index wheel. There are 96 different points so it allows me to divide the stone up and put facets where I want to put facets. So now that the stone is where I want it I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the chuck here. It's a little cullet that holds the stone. Make sure I where I want to be where I get it too tight. Alright, the stone is in place. I'm going to reinspect to make sure that's where I want it to be. And right now it looks good. So now I'm going to lift my mast upward and we're going to go ahead and set our first put the splash guard in place because this gets kind of messy icky wet fun so put that in place I'm gonna raise my mast up so that I can get the right protracted angle to begin with and the according to my sheet here for the crown my first angle is 49 degrees so this is like 49.90 degrees for this particular design, I'm taking out the uh, the tenth and the one hundredth place, or the ones in the tenth place. Chewy woo! 
go ahead and set this to 49 degrees. All right, first one is at 50 degrees. There's my, zoom out a little bit. There's my stop angle. Loosen up these Allen wrenches a little bit, and these Allen bolts, so I can slide my mast forward. There we go. So I want to make sure that I have plenty of room for the fastening machine to maneuver around here. So I'm going to start dropping the height of the mast, which is this tall point, that the fastening head moves up and down on. And I'm just going to wiggle it until I make contact with the lap. Keep on going down. And right now, that is going to be good. So I'll tighten up this position. I'll tighten up my mast. And then I'm going to tighten down my lateral movement here on the mast to make sure it's nice and solid. But the next step is to turn a light amount of water on, which I have loaded up in my little water hopper here. There's a tank just behind it. And I'll go ahead and turn that on until I get a little bit of a flow. And then I'll turn it down to a drip. You don't want too much water, but you want enough water so that the swath kind of flows away. So there we are. We're set at our first angle and our first uh, index is going to be 19, 29, 67, and 77. So I'm going to go around the stone changing the index gears to those numbers. It's a lot to take in if you're not used to this kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just film me doing it and uh, we'll have some fun. So I have the first series of cuts finished up. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more here. You can see the outer outline 
of that stone now has facets on it and just following that recipe has allowed me to uniformly create that pattern using the faceting machine as a, as a tool. So now the process is going to be uh, creating the break facets. The other facets are going to kind of make this look like a gemstone. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, keep you guys appraised. So first thing is I need to move my angle to 42 degrees. One, two. And then I'm going to index my stone to 24 and then 72. 24. Okay. Every time I cut, I check because what I'm trying to do is make sure my facets hit their meet point, which is where the angles will meet, and I want to make sure that at that point I have uh, a good, good meet. Because if you don't have good meet points, it uh, it looks like a sloppy cut. And that's not what we want. So next one is 72. There's 72. going to be 40 going to go 14 to begin with the next one is 50 degrees starting at six, index of six. It doesn't look like much now, but I have all of the angles cut on a 100 grit wheel, which means it's pretty gritty. It's not going to look very shiny and polishy. Now if I move it around in the light like this, you can see the facets shining against the kind of the wet light here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it to a finer grit lap, do the, exactly the same thing over again, same angles, same indexes only do it on a uh, little finer grit. Once that's done, I should be ready to go ahead and polish it. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I did with this wheel, only using a uh, finer grit. I'm not gonna show that because you just watched basically all of what you need to know in order to do this type of cut. You just do the same thing over and over and over again. Now with polishing, same thing. You find the right type of polish, <clears throat> and then you uh, you go through the steps. So I'll show a little bit of that, but as far as working the grits back up to like maybe a 1200, 
Uh, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll join you back when I have that finished. Try and pick this up a little bit. I have the stone cut to the grit that I want. It's about uh, 1200, 3000. And now it's time to polish. So now you can see all those facets around there. Those I'm gonna go ahead and polish and then I'm gonna dome or polish the, uh, the top there. And it should be nice and bright. Already, I can see that uh, it's going to have some good stuff on the inside. It'll be nice and dark, which will go really well with the uh, skull kind of motif that I'm probably going to go with with this. So, uh, for polishing, oh, what am I going to do? I think I'm going to use a lap called a Corian. Same thing they use for countertop. And then I'm going to polish it with serenium oxide or chrome oxide. Chrome oxide is green, so it matches kind of the color. It works really well with jade. If I have chrome oxide, I'll use that. If not, I'll use uh, serenium. So let me go ahead and find that, and I'll set it up. All right, so I have my Corian lap right here. This is just a piece of countertop that I cut out, ground, put a hole in, and it polishes stones. And I'll show you how. So first of all, I want to add a little bit of, basically it's an extender fluid for polishing, a little bit of oil, like mineral oil or some other patented fluid. I'm going to use a serenium oxide powder. this guy here and then kind of sprinkle a little bit of that on my lap now I can keep that out I'll add to it a little bit but I'm just gonna kind of turn my lap on nice and low that in. Okay. And I'm going to go through that same process using the Corian lap to polish the facets that I made. So let's go ahead and get that. Turn on a little bit of water. And we'll polish our first facet. Alright, so So this facet here has been polished. You see it glint in the light. The rest of the stone will do that as soon as I get the rest of them polished. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process and uh, polish this thing up. So that's what it looks like right now. Alright, we have one more part before we're finished with this stone. 
I've got it pretty much all uh, polished up except for the table, which is the top of the stone. So let me go ahead and show you this. Try and get some light on it and then get a good look at what's going on with this stone. There we go. So as you can see, I have and focus all the facets polished except for the table. Now who <laughs> the table is going to take a special jig that is basically 45 degrees and it's going to go into the machine and then the stone it's going to be able to be at a 90 degree so I'll set my thing at 45 degrees here raise my mast up I'm going to remove my stone is done and I just need to polish the top so I'm going to remove this and then I'll insert this guy in zoom out so you guys can see what's happening so my mast is, or my protractor is set at 45 degrees. This jig is 45 degrees. And I'm going to undo my mast here. Scoot it back a little bit. So I have room on my lap to polish the top table. And that looks good. Tighten that back up. Now I'm going to drop my mast so that my 45 degree angle jig aligns with my lap because I want that to be absolutely dead flat. Now that it's there, I'm going to tighten it back up so that it clamps down on my, my stuff here. And now I have my angle of 90 degrees. So I'm gonna take my stone, throw it in the jig, tighten it down, and then lower my mast so I can polish the table. is locked into place. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. All right. Get some light on me here. It's kind of bright. Kind of dark. Oh, there we go. Hey. Dramatic lighting. All right, <clears throat> so what we have is our finished product. Let's try and get in the light here. I'll get some better pictures, but this light is really nice for being able to see the facets. So we'll center it out.